Um, so today's uh, meeting is, um, like I said, I wanted to do like a, a um, TLDR of chaos or like kind of like onboard you all like properly and show you different things as much as I can and answer as much questions because, you know, we earlier discussed that like this group, which serve as like a committee, you know, would do a lot of community management um, strategy, we do a lot of like planning. I've also been setting up a, I don't know how many of you know Fig Jam? Fig Jam? Yeah. Um, nope. Okay, so it's like a board, it's Figma, but it's a board. Um, I've been trying to also do up like different boards, um, which I'm going to add you all to. Um, but that's like there are two sections of this meeting. First is we'll talk about chaos in depth, and then second is we look at the different that we have created and we start. Um, I invite you all to collaborate on it. I'm also learning how to use it too, so we'll all learn how to use it together. So would um that's where we would be looking at for like our strategy planning goals calendar okrs and all that um so they have that board in place like i just have templates for now and um with time we'll keep trying to improve on that and you know do reviews and all that stuff so let's start with the first part of the meeting which is talking about chaos yep so one to ten what's your where are you now at with understanding what chaos does like one to ten okay yeah i'll go first um i think i i, I just um i was able to go through the, the doc i think um first three or i think first three pages yeah and basically i would kind of rate my knowledge about chaos uh, around six over ten. Ah, oh, that's that's a really really good score. Six over ten. Nice. Thank you. Ayo. Um, Shibel, you could use the chat. Um, lesson. Um. Okay. Okay. Blessing day four. Okay. Shibel, how about you? Wow, seven, interesting. Okay, um, great. So maybe we should even be having this call, but that's by the way. So um, I think usually when I'm asked like, what does chaos do? I usually just see health, like community health, because that's what we focus on, right? That's what we. That's what we kind of, um, that's where we are benching on like improving community health in open source communities. And we do it through uh, metrics, software, and initiatives. Um, so let's start with like, um, let's look at the, there's a diagram that shows like the history of how like Kale started. Um, how many of us know like the, um, the Linux conference, OSS summit, the open source summit, the Linux found. Oh, how many of us know like the Linux Foundation? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just indicating that I know about the conference. Okay, okay, great. So during the conference in March 2017, right? Um, people kind of like came together and they were they had a conversation about open source community health and, and that conversation led to chaos being announced at um, the open source um, summits in North America in August 2017. And from there, you know, the community started, um, a first board um, of directors was formed then the the first working group that came was like the diversity and inclusion working group and then they started holding chaos con um chaos con is like a 
a conference for talking about chaos. They say holding, hosting chaos con conferences. Um, and then the other working groups, they're coming up like the evolution working group, risks and value, um, common working group, and then the first metric release. So going back now, like these working groups are groups that they come together to create metrics of how, depending on what the name of the working group is, of how like, um, of how um, open source communities can, probably if it's like the diversity and inclusion, how they can be more diverse, you know, inclusive, how they can um, create um, a room for accessibility and all that stuff within their community. And these working groups, like they come together, they create metrics within a certain period of time and they collect all these metrics. So that's what a metric release is, like coming, putting the metrics together and, you know, in a PDF format, right? If you are, if you are familiar with the software, development cycle you know they're like they have things like release documents and all that stuff so a, a metric release is something like a pdf that lists out all the different metrics that each of the working group have worked on in a certain period of time or have updated or have reviewed in a certain period of time so this was the first metric release in 2019 then they launched like the chaos cast um the community um, podcast and also the, the badging initiative came out of this working group, the diversity and inclusion working group in 2020. This this um this map is not like up to date. Um working on updating it to I'm working on the community handbook. So there are a couple of things in this community handbook that are not up to date. Right. Um something I missed out on when I talked about the whole how chaos started. There's a company called Biteja. Um, Biteja is a company that you know the the focus. Let me show you Biteja. Um, Biteja. This is the company called Biteja. It's like a software development analytics. Um, how you can get analytics for your software development program for your open source program office and all that stuff. So now this company, right, they are they are deeply involved in chaos in the sense that they they have a project called the Grimo Lab that they were planning to donate to the Linux Foundation. And Chaos is a Linux Foundation project, right? It came out of the Linux, um, the open source summit in America, not America. So um, Briteja as a company had the project that they wanted to, you know, put it, it was a, it was a, it, I think it was a, either a proprietary, maybe it was a proprietary software or maybe it was even open source, but it was under them, but they wanted to donate it to like the Linux foundation. So Chaos fits in like that's where they could donate the project to. So that's how Chaos adapted like Remo Lab. Even till today, the company, Briteja, they still, they still manage Grimoire Lab, uh, right? Um, they still manage, but it's part of Chaos Software. Um, so yeah, so this is like the history. Does anyone have like any question at this point? I'm not seeing um, the chair, okay. Okay, no question so far. Okay, great. So um, the new things, apart from this, after this was formed, I think the new things that I want to add here is the, um, you know, Asia Pacific, um, the community, Asia Pacific started in 2021. We have a local community for Asians. Um, and then Chaos Africa started 2022. So that those are like the new things to add to this map here. Like two things I want to add to this map um yeah nice i also enjoyed reading, reading the history too so that's um how chaos has evolved over the years since 2017 right um so kind of like the values right let's look at like the values like i said um community health is something that is core to us like um 
we we put interest in a healthy community right um you know openness is something it's an open source project so it's it's like in every open source project open has to be there so these are like the values transparency in everything we chaos like there's a lot of transparency like we do everything in the open um even the metrics that are worked on like everything is done in those working groups like if you've joined any of the working group calls you'd see that this like it's it's the google um document is accessible to everyone on that call everybody contributes to it it's like everything is transparent you can see where everything is um you can have like um, the link to the drive like except it's like very internal documents, but then everything is, most of the information is public. It's only some that are treated like with limited access, um, but most of all the information is public and we support like diversity and inclusion, right? So we try to include everybody, which is even something that why Chaos Africa and Chaos Asia Pacific started is to be more inclusive to um, other people in other time zones and kind of like include them in the process merit trust utility these are like the values within chaos um so um the roadmap is like said metrics we do a lot of metrics right um, I, I yeah i don't think i could stop you in there uh just ask just want to clarify something okay so um from your own perspective now what defines a healthy community Okay, um, there are different, when you help for a healthy community, that you look at different things. Um, you look at the contributors, right? Um, there are different like focus areas. At the top of my head, you want to look at um, the contributor, um, contributors, their well-being, right? Are they, uh, when contributors come into your project, do they find, are they properly onboarded or do they find what they need, right? Um, you want to look at their um contributor retain like retaining contributors to contributors come in and just leave um you also want to look at um how people contribute to your project like how they interact with your project maybe on github or whatever platform you're seeing you're using for your project another focus area you could um look at is um diversity and inclusion when people come into your project do you are there like are, is everyone included in the process? Is there like accessibility during the chats, like in a Zoom? Um, is there like caption access? Is there um do people are people heard like do people um opinions matter? You want to look at there are a whole lot of things. Um there are different focus areas here. So that's why with chaos we did we did everything with focus um working groups rather like okay this is a working group that will focus on this is a working group that will focus on diversity and inclusion this is a working group that will focus on risks um this is a working group that will focus on value how is um how are people in this how is this project giving value to the individuals or did to the world at large or to the community this um, group will focus on common metrics like maybe contributors, contributions, um, contributor life cycle. Um, this other working group will fo focus on app ecosystem. What is the life cycle, the life cycle of um, your project or your app? So all those kind of things. Um, that's why we kind of like separated it here at Chaos. But if you ask me like what makes up a... Like when you talk about health, what comes to my mind? I can say a thousand and one things, but here, like at Chaos, we can like divided them into those two different things. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, 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 it did. Thanks. Okay, I think Ijama just joined us. Hi, Ijama. Um, Hi, Ruth. Yeah. Sorry, I I totally forgot. I don't know. I. I, I remember but along the line, I guess I carried the way I was carried away with something. So sorry for coming late. So no problem, no while at all. Um the call the call is being recorded, so you might be able to catch up like the first, maybe the first 20 minutes of the call. We just talked about like how care started, like the history. I think that's the most important thing I want to catch up with. 
All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. So um yeah, so we like the working groups, they create these metrics, right? And let me show you an example of the metric. So when, when I say metric, it doesn't sound too foreign. Um, so let's see. Um, so let's look at um, common metrics, for example, the working group common metrics this is the repository. Each of the repository, each of the working groups have like a de dedicated repository. So for example, like I said, we have those focus areas. For example, this focus area is um, on contributions, right? Um, how do you identify identify what contributions are made in your, if say for example, the community wants to measure, um, measure how um, contributions are made, are people doing code contributions or are people contributing to documentation who like, how many people do this? How many people, how many, what percentage of the community is contributing to documentation? Which ones are contributing doing um code um code comments? So you this metric could help you better understand understand different kinds of contributions. So for example, we have um people do technical forks um to an open source project on like a code development platform. Um, you could also understand different kinds of contributions. Um, you could also understand programming language distributions and clones. So let's look at let's look at this metric um, type of contributions. Now, if you look at this, this is a metric. This is a typical metric under contributions, right? A focus area is contributions for the common common working group. Now. The description, this is a typical template. We have what's the question being asked. Okay, you want to know what types of contributions are made in your open source project, right? Um, what's what is the description, the objectives, what do you want to measure? How do you implement this? What is the implementation? How can you implement um type of contributions, knowing the type of contributions that are made? Um, how you want to do like data collection, how can you collect data as regards that? And then you can check, we put in like a lot of references of how we, what you can read more on to understand like different types of contributions in your um, community. So um, let's, let's be, let's try to be practical with this. Just think of any community that comes to your head and put in the chat. Let's use that to explain. Mm. You open those community. Yeah, community that comes to your head. No one's coming to anybody said trust. Okay, for no styles, that an open source community. What did you do? Trust. Shuba, what did you for the open source trigger alternative? Interesting. Okay, so um okay. Okay, let's use the R5. Maybe a lot of people are familiar with the R5. So for example, oh my God, I don't need a lot of stuff. So for example, the R5 wants to know, they want to understand the types of contributions they get in their project. So they stumble on this metric that Chaos has created, right? Um, so they want to understand the multiple varied contributions that make an open source project healthy, like. Many projects have community members who do not write code, but equally contribute in valuable ways, right? Like triaging bugs, talking about the project, helping in other ways. So the objective for this metric is a variety of contribution types can demonstrate that a project is mature um, and enable parts in leadership. So like beyond coding. So it's beyond um, contributions are beyond code contributions. So how do you um, implement this? The following this can help you now 
you know that initially you did not know how okay what are the other contributions like maybe the community manager layer five did not really know what other ways people contribute what other types of contributions are there or did you not really understand how to categorize it so by looking at this list you know you could identify different contributions by writing code reviewing with people that review code you can say people that charge bugs people that do QA and testing people that do localization event organization documentation like a whole lot of all these lists you can have a list of these are different kinds of contributions that people can make to an open source project so if you want to collect data like you want to collect like data in your community on how to do that you can either use we recommend that you either use like an interview or survey to kind of ask community members to recognize others for their contributions um you observe you can observe the project too you can capture non-code contributions by using like an issue tracker you can collect trace data you can measure like this trace data through a collaboration tool. You can automate um, classification. You can use like an AI bot to identify and classify contributions, right? These are other contributions you could do if you want to. So some a community manager in layer five or a community member coming here with these data collection strategies, they will know, okay, these are the ways I can measure, I can be able to measure the different types of contributions that come to my project right and maybe find ways to serve them better to be inclusive to them or maybe find ways to support these people that do these contributions and to recognize them as well so um me coming that layer five community man manager coming here has gotten like some information on how they can measure the metric as regards the type of contributions they get so is is this um example like is it practical enough to so what someone would you use chaos metrics for okay great so it's each of all these things they apply to like each of these this example I've given applies to every metric that we create. Like for example, this one about programming language distribution. You, you want to understand the number of programming languages. And if a community wants to understand like the number of programming languages and percentage of each language in a project, right? So what is the percentage of Python um, present in, uh, what are different programming languages that are present in my open source community? or projects and what is the percentage of each language you know when you look at um when you randomly look at the repository there's this thing that um github does that it kind of like tells you different programming stacks that are like in that project i don't know if any of you have seen that before yeah okay great so um yeah like um now you see that this metric now is even more useful for um, OSPOs and community managers aiming to understand which language are most prominent and perhaps which language are little used but critical. Do you get so each of these um, each of these metrics? They are all applicable in like real real time, like real life communities, like things that things that people find confusing or things that people do not know how to measure or do not even know how to support their members on so with the different uh, metrics we create here it could help you understand how you would support your your community better or how you maintain health in your community so this is a this is a a how would i say this now this is a very good example to each and every working group, what each and every working group metrics, how it's applicable to to the different um, to the different metrics. So let me go back to that. So, like I said, we also have um, so are, are we clear on like 
what metrics are and you know how it's kind of like applicable in larger sense. Mm, is that a yes? Sorry, what was the question again, please? Like, are we clear on like what metrics are, like what metrics in chaos are and how they are kind of like applicable in like real, in the real world? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. So, um, like I said, we have like metric releases and basically this metric release is just like a PDF of in a, in a short amount or in a specific, I the, the three month span, like mm -hmm. metrics that are added, metrics that are reviewed, updated. That's what these metric releases are. And let me show you the recent one. Um, so if you check, um, if you go to this page metrics, you'd see the, so the recent one, um, you see the, um, the release date was, the last one was in um, first week of April. So this is it um, here. See the date is there. So I think in the next three months again, there'll be like another release. So if you see, this is the common metrics working group, right? These are the different focus areas we have, contributions, time, people, um, place, right? Um, and these are the different metrics that were released and, you know, that were updated. Diversity and inclusion working group, um, event diversity, governance, leadership, projects and communities, evolution, um, RICS working group, values working group. Right, so this is like what the metric release is. Um, do we are we clear on that part? Sorry, I'm not seeing the chat. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. Are you are we clear? Are you clear on it? Um. Are you and Joma? Yes, 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 Claire. Yeah. Um, so um, software releases or software, we have like two um, softwares in Chaos, um, actually three, but one of them, I don't even know if it's still active, but the two ones, the two softwares are Grimo Lab, which I talked about, that was a Biteja owned project before the handed over to Chaos. Biteja, um, Grimo Lab and um, Auger. So those are two softwares. And basically what they do is they, they are like softwares to properly analyze, to create like, to analyze like your software project and create metrics for it. Like metrics in the sense that to create like a chart, either like a graph chart of how contributions or how things are, how um, activities going on in your open source projects. So that's what those two softwares do. Um, I think another thing I want to highlight is what each of, there's a particular page. So like it's the idea of what each working group is about. Um, you can find it. So I'm trying to find that particular page. Uh, hold on a sec. So if you want to look at the specific terms, um, you can check here um, what the focus area is, what the metric with it. So is it 30 day? No, it's not a 30 day. This is the comments period. So what's chaos con is? Is it conference, chaos cast? Looking, okay, now the working groups now. Okay, common the common metric working group, what's the focus on is defining metrics that um used by both working groups are important for community health diversity and inclusion is more of measuring diversity and inclusion in 
open source projects. Evolution is focusing on refining metrics that inform evolution and work with software implementations. Then the RICS working group is focused on compliance and RICS um, within open source projects because when before companies adopt open, there are a lot of like anything about licenses, different licenses. So that's what the RICS working group is about. And value is like um, economic value of open source in maybe academic setting, um, in companies, um, in individuals, like individuals as well. So these are the three softwares I talked about initially. This one is, I don't know if it's still active, but these are the ones I know that are kind of like active. So, um, us, okay. The other thing I want to talk about is when I showed this map here, I talked about this um, DI badging, right? That I said came out of this working group. So basically what um, the DI badging um, initiative is about is the diversity and inclusion working group kind of um, so came together. Um, it was mainly an idea. It was mainly an idea, right, from someone. We are trying to put, in, put together a documentation that would properly explain what DEI badging is. But DEI badging is, um, there are two ways here. We have for events, for open source events and for open source conferences. Like, do you understand the, just, like, do you understand the concept of badging? Are you coming in towards the last part? Badging. Yeah, like, do you understand the concept of badging, just the way GitHub gives badges? Um, yes, yes, yes. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Yeah, there like, was this uh, time when the Arctic, the Arctic code, something was going on everywhere. Yeah. So badging is just badging um, something, an award that is given to an open source event. So we have for events and we have for projects. Projects is something we are still bringing up, but events have been here for a long time. So it's like um, for events, badging open source events, say for example, the, the um, event you did in Abuja or even the, the festival that happened in March, they come to apply to chaos for a badge and we badge the conference or the events for being like inclusive. So if you check, um, let me go to that section. So it's basically aims to understand open source projects and event practices that encourage greater diversity and inclusion of people from like different backgrounds, right? It's like an open... Yeah. Sorry, do we have a sample of an event that happened recently that has been, you know, given this badge? Yeah. Um. So OSS. Any. So let me show you Linux Foundation. Um, the one that happened in North America. So if you check their um their diversity and inclusion page, you'd see a chaos badge. So this was um, a badge that was given to them. Like, so it's kind of like recognizes that the event is they ensure so how that. Is it verified? Huh? How is it? How is it verified that it's so, or so like it's pair, Yeah, it's a peer review system. Let me show you um, what happens. Like, so when, for example, you're you're organizing a conference, right? Say you're you as the event organizer for the Abuja conference you did or event you did, right? It's an in-person event. So you want to apply um, for a badge. You come here, it's an in-person event. We, sh we like have a form where we, you can put in um, details about the event name, the link to the event website, are you the organizer? So now these are the different information we require of you now. We, we have put together these metrics that you know, that um, measure, that show that the event is diverse and inclusive, 
right? Like these things are things that we put together by different set of people, and you know, we've we've done surveys, we've we we have like people have understood like experts of within the community have seen okay these are the ways that you could do you could um be diverse and inclusive if you're organizing an event so we have like a a set of um, questions we ask for the applicants these are the questions you fill in detail the process by which you use measuring like your event demographic um putting like an example um, for inclusive experience, how do you how do you make sure that attendees are, you know, um, included? Does events provide feedback? Like after the event, can people, you know, give feedback on how they can improve the, uh, of how they can tell you how you did not do something well, or, you know, how can attendees learn more about accessibility in your events? does the event platform so all these questions here we ask for code of conduct we ask if you provide diversity access ticket like for people that cannot afford to be in your conference are there if your conference is a paid conference you have you have like provision for diversity access tickets is there family friendliness like if they're like people bringing their child to the conference there where they can care for their child um or like maybe for breastfeeding mothers where a place where they can go breastfeed their child all those kind of things so when you apply when you submit um when you submit your application it automatically it autom automatically opens an issue let me show you the particular repository it automatically opens an issue here on this repository right and then let me show you for example oh wow is this a real conference how did I not see this? Uh, sorry, I missed out on this. Um, so this is, uh, let me even show you how. So for example, I don't know how I missed out on this application. So for example, this is a, this is somebody that has filled the form here. So as I'm one of the maintainers of this project, right? So what I come here to do, I assign there are two people that are, that are assigned to review this event. So we have is a peer review system where human beings review the events. So usually we usually have the bots that does this, but then some GSOC students are working on the bots. So it's it's been flawed. The algorithm is flawed. So I have to manually come and do it. So um, we have a list of reviewers. Um, so let me see um, who has not even reviewed recently. Um, let me see. So um, Anita is one of the reviewers as well. So I I would assign two people to review this um, to review this to review this um, this um, events. So when I assign them, I'm just going to quickly apologize to this person that I missed out on this because I don't know how I did. So you see that when when I assign, let me just go before I make that comment. When I assign two people to it, we have a bot that automatically brings a checklist, right? So this is a checklist that the reviewers we use to um to look at the application that the person has made this is the person's application so the reviewer goes through this checklist and ticks all of them any of them that does not um apply they do not tick it right they if say for example they don't have they don't have like diversity access tickets they are not going to tick any of these boxes so when the reviewers are done they indicate that they are done with their review and then i come to I now come to like initiate the bot to it's a it's an automation thing where the bot uses the the review the review scores to create a badge. So we have like different badge. You have like a diamond badge, a gold badge, and a silver badge and a pending badge. So for that conference I showed you, it was a dime a gold badge, right? So um with the with the review we did, um the bot calculated a gold badge. So that that was like a gold badge awarded to them. 
So I don't know if you get the you get it now. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 So um and this whole this whole initiative, right? It came from the diversity and inclusion working group. So you see how it's not just metrics, but initiatives, projects can come out from the working groups too. I have a question. Are these real life conferences? Or... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are real life conferences. Like the um this conference is the conference that has even passed, um, the open source summit North America. I was I wanted to push for Oscar to get one, but I I don't know how I missed out on it. Like I didn't know who to reach out to, or like I forgot to send the email and they didn't apply for a badge, right? So that was what happened with Oscar. So, so yeah, if you if you get a badge, what next? You you display it like in your maybe your DEI page. I don't know if you have seen um websites that have like they say they are this compliant or they have like a badge that shows that they do this. Like you know what badges are, you display it like if if a policeman comes to you without a badge, you it's it's suspicious, right? So if it's just mainly it's not like you must have a badge, but something that chaos helps you do like is you learn how to how to improve the AI like there are some conferences that have come for applications and they didn't have like um like um say for example they didn't have they didn't have like a feedback form that they will give out to their um attendees to kind of mm -hmm. you can improve um inclusivity or accessibility or they didn't have like a place where you know um people could go like family friendliness child care support all these kind of things so they've been able to learn to learn from the process so it's not like okay you must if you don't have a badge you're not your conference is not diverse and inclusive it's just something we encourage that you have and people see the need to okay we can learn from the process and all okay yeah I think how, do, how do how does one attend all these conferences okay like if you want to attend the conferences um usually um, I think that's that's out of the scope of here, but usually if you want, like I'll be attending the open source summit Europe, hopefully. Um, I I applied for a talk there, so I should be attending that one hopefully. But usually, um, they do they do sponsor like travel, like these are things for that like that are related to diversity as well, right? They sponsor um like you see this page, it has a scholarship and travel funding. Right. Um. Some of these con conferences can sponsor your travel, and reimburse you for your travel, diversity access tickets. Like, so yeah, most of conferences do have like funding for people that want to travel to attend. I know. Yeah. So I wanted to add um some. I know that something regarding the diversity stuff. So based, I think I wanted to, when we were organizing Oscar Abuja, open mm -hmm. source day, so we re, when we reached out to Postman, mm -hmm. yeah, Postman asked some questions around how the event is um, inclusive, mm -hmm. how the event, you know, you know, how we are observing the accessibility and all that. So they needed to know how many speakers, how many are female, blah blah blah. So exactly. yeah, I think the badge also could, yeah, I think the badge also could help help event event body and organization, you know, quickly get sponsorship. Exactly. So that's another yeah. thing. That that's a very good point you made. There. Like it helps you quickly get a sponsorship because if you show a badge, like okay, this is it. We 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 kind of like we were able to get a badge so this shows that these people have verified our processes and see that we are diverse and inclusive so you can get funding you're easy you you can easily get funding you know for for um from com companies and all so yeah that's like a really valid um, valid addition so like this so there are like different different things like this this um the AI project is constantly growing. Like it's, we are currently working on like the ones for projects, 
where projects can apply for badges to show that they are like um, diverse and inclusive. So the, that's the current thing that is, we are working on our project. So the next thing is, okay, how do we, this is going to be a long call, or like we have not even really talked about, um, I've not talked about, I, I said I was going to share like the different boards I have created for Chaos Africa. Um, but they, let me try to wrap up things. But um, the, the thing with understanding what Chaos does on a large scale is I can do it two hours or three hours and talk about Chaos and you need to see the things for yourself. You need to participate in the meetings and gradually you get to grasp what Chaos is about. And I'm always here to explain or help out, but I don't know if this has given you some some information about you know chaos and all like some at least one if, if I would ask again maybe um what's your level of knowledge at least one or two that I've added <laughs> I, I really need to calm down and read this handbook yeah like <laughs> when you when you go to handbook you'd you'd grab some things and not just going through the handbook so i would love like for the there are some meetings that i would really recommend that you attend um one of which is the weekly sync the weekly sync so you can you can check this participate page and copy it to your calendar and make sure you put it on weekly like for it to repeat weekly so it happens weekly at 5 p.m our time so when you attend the weekly meetings, at least before you choose what working group you want to participate in, right? You can get a grasp of how chaos works. Um, and that meeting I recommend if you're interested in that DEI event budgeting, um, is we have a particular meeting for it that happens bi-weekly. Um, it happens every two weeks. The last one was so the next one is next week. So DEI budgeting. You can copy it to your calendar too and make it appear um, every two weeks, right? So it just automatically appears every two weeks. If you also want to attend the DEI working group meeting too, you can also copy it to your calendar. So if you attend one or two meetings, like if you do it like weekly, you get to grab things um, gradually and get to understand how things work. Why I did this call was to give you a light from a practical aspect of things you get so that's that way you as you as you explore on your own you also understand things i don't know if that makes sense yeah sure um yeah so thank you i think uh, your explanation kind of shed more light on the things i've read so far from the handbook yeah, I think it's what I think was nice. I was able to get a kind of an extended overview, extended understanding of um, the few pages I've gone through so far. Okay, um, that's great. I'm happy to hear that. So the I think the last thing we just what I would just want to do for us in a few minutes. I said I was building like a a board, right? Um, for different, like to plan different things we are going to be doing at Chaos Africa. So I'd like to invite like people to this, I'd like to invite everyone to this board. So one thing, um, first I, these are templates for now, like I have the, the, um, the strategy and planning is currently empty, but this would have like, three like quarterly three months plan six months plan um you know nine months like a, a three month strategy plan we have like a board this is the board to kind of build up that strategy um with sticky notes you know like a flow diagram like a whole lot of things i'm still learning how to use fig jam um then we also have like i have a calendar this one is a template for now like a calendar because I'm looking at um this in August. I've been talking to some speakers to do like a Twitter space in August. So we'd have like anything events we are doing because we are going to be doing workshops. Um today I talked with 
um, someone from Cameroon um, and he introduced me to like a Cameroon open source community. So all, all the things about calendar we are going to put in here so that we would have like different months and for planning and all so that we get to track what we are doing in the long run. So um, I also have the OKRs board. I did like an OKR board. This is still a template. I'm not putting anything yet. Um, I, I, do, I have not set an OKR before. The only personal OKRs I've set, but I've not set an OKR for a community. So this is my first time doing it. So I'm still planning on how to set this up, right? Um, and then I have like a template for like we used to do quarterly check-in and um, see how we are doing, you know, from like charts, see how we are doing within Africa, communities, communities we are impacting, things we are doing, how our members are like, you know, interacting, we'd be tracking all that with this template. So I have all these templates all here. I'm still building them up and I'm still even trying to learn how to use Figma and FigJam. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a, it's an interesting thing to do. So I would invite um, everyone to this board to just have, um, if you have ideas, we would have like, I think we'll have a call where we'll collaborate and talk more about, um, you know, each of these boards and build it up on a call. So I don't know if anybody has any thoughts. Yeah, that works, that works. Okay, so can you have like your email address here? Let me just add you to the board, um, to the team. Okay. Yeah. It's a place where you add team members. I'm looking for where I'll add team members now. Hold them. Happy. Sorry, I'm trying to look for where our ad team members so. I know he showed something like that when I was trying to, when I was trying to put in okay members. Of, of. Uh, invite what? Wait by email. So let me send you first. Yeah. Oh no, have you gotten check if you've gotten it? Um Ayo. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. Okay, great. So yeah, so we'll be using this subsequently to plan um a whole lot of things. But before we start planning, I'll just be doing the things gradually while you all try to understand things um for the meantime. But if you have any ideas, you can drop it. I think would we'll, maybe in two weeks time would we'll, um do a call where we we'll try to plan all these things and I'll carry you all along in what I've done so far, what I've planned so far in this document. Oh, in these boards, brother. Does that work? Yeah, okay. I think it's that's all for this call. Um, we used one hour, so I hope this has helped you to some extent. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and this call was also recorded, so you can always go out, paste the link of the call, so you can always check it later 
And if you missed out on anything or you need to, or you can always ask me any questions. So. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Ruth. Yeah. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye. Yeah. Take care.